Today I'm going to share with you three secrets and tips I use when I roll over my short put options. By the time this video is through, you will know three techniques you can use to trade and roll put options for awesome cash flow every single month. I am Randy Perez. I'm a 21 plus year stock and option trader as well as real estate investor. If you're already a member of our community, thank you for setting aside a part of your day to be here. If you're not already a member of this community, go ahead and click the subscribe button and bell notification. You'll be joining a community of traders and investors that are helping each other become more knowledgeable and profitable. Selling put options has become my absolute favorite way to generate monthly cash flow. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly when is the right time to roll put options, how you can extend the time on a put option by rolling it out, and how to roll a deep in the money put option. What is your favorite way to trade in the stock market? Are you a day trader, a covered call or put option trader? Are you a growth investor or are you a dividend stock investor? In the comments below, let me know what your favorite way is to trade in the stock market. And stay tuned in until the end of this video where I will show you exactly how much money you can make selling and rolling put and call options for a living. Briefly, in case you're newer to option trading, when you sell a put option, you're giving the buyer of that option the right to put or sell you the stock that you have sold the put option on at a predetermined price called the strike price within a predetermined amount of time, which is called the expiration date. If you're new to option trading, check out the video playlist in the link above in the description below entitled How to Trade Options for Beginners after you finish watching this video. Let's begin by assuming you already know how to sell put options. The question we'll answer now is when is the right time to roll your put option? What do we mean by rolling a put option? This simply means that we are buying back to close out the put option that we sold and we are selling to open a new option in the same stock that expires at a later date. In order to answer the question of when is the right time to roll a put option, it's helpful to know a little Greek. I'm not talking about the Greek language, I'm talking about option Greeks. We're not going to discuss all the option Greeks or various factors that make up the price that an option sells for, but I do want to discuss one Greek or one factor that I consider regularly when deciding the right time to roll a put option. This Greek is called theta. Theta is the measure of the rate of decline in the value of an option due to the passing of time. It also can be referred to as the option's time decay. If everything else is held constant, the option loses value as time moves closer to maturity or the expiration date of that option. Let me show you an example of this in a position I'm in right now. As you can see here on the screen, I sold three of the Medtronic ticker symbol MDT September 18th 100 put options. I did this just over 30 days ago. Back when I sold that option, we received $3.09 per share for it. Now that we're only three days away from September 18th option expiration day, this option is only worth eight cents, as you can see here under market value. The 300 shares that we sold is now only worth $24. Actually, I'm a little bit past due on rolling this option. I meant to roll it yesterday, but I just got so busy and I ran out of time before the market closed, so I wasn't able to do it. So I plan to roll it this morning once the market opens. Notice what theta is on this position. Here on my E-Trade Option Analysis tool, in the blue box on the top left corner, you see that we're looking at the Medtronic MDT September 18th $100 put option. And notice what theta is in the red box at the bottom. It's less than a penny per share. This tells us that there is pretty much no time premium left in this option. The reason why I watch theta is because when an option like this gets close to expiration and it's out of the money, it generally doesn't have much time premium left in it. That means that there's not a whole lot of money to be made in this option anymore. Let's now look at next month's put option in Medtronic at the same strike price, $100. Notice here the theta on this option that still has around 30 days left on it is 2.6 cents per share per day. As you can see, we are a lot better off buying to close the option that expires at the end of this week because there's hardly no time value left in it and then sell to open this new option that expires in 30 days that will lose on average 2.5 cents per day per share. 
Looking at theta makes it really easy to know when is the right time to roll a short put option position. So this morning, when the market opens, we'll look at what the $100 October put option is selling for, and if the return is good enough, then we'll roll this position out 30 more days to continue this party. If not, then I'll simply buy to close this Medtronic September $100 put option and look for a new position in a different stock that gives us a nice premium. The same strategy would apply if the put option you sold was in the money. Briefly, here's an example of that scenario in Brookfield Infrastructure Partners, ticker symbol BIP. Several months back, we had sold the $50 September 18th put option, which expires in three days. We don't necessarily want the option assigned to us, so we had a roll order out there to roll this September $50 put option out to October 16th $50 put option. Here you see looking at our option analysis tool at the September $50 put that expires in just a couple of days, it had right at two cents per day of time decay left in it. Now let's swap over to the October 16th $50 put and here you see that it has a little bit over 2.3 cents per day of time decay. Because there is so little time decay on this September $50 option, we went ahead and bought to close that option today at the same time sold to open the same strike price $50 put that expires on October 16th. For that, we received 65 cents per share. This equals a 15.3% cash on cash return. I'm happy with that considering that this put option is over 4% in the money. This is actually a position that has a bit of a story which I won't go into here, but we sold this put option when it was really deep in the money back on June the 8th. The short addition of this story is that we bought to close a deep in the money put option on another stock which I no longer felt comfortable being short that put option on anymore. We wanted to roll that money for a credit so we bought to close the put option in the stock that I wasn't comfortable with anymore and we sold to open the one here in BIP. That's why it was sold so deep in the money. At that time, BIP was trading around $45 per share, so it was about 10% in the money. But this shows you that you can also check time decay on a deep in the money put option. A quick and easy way to check time decay on options that are deep in the money is to look at how much time decay or premium is left on the corresponding call option. This won't give you an exact amount of value that's left in that put option of time decay, but it gives you a pretty good idea. If there's not much premium left in a call option, then you can feel pretty comfortable that there's not much premium left in the corresponding put option either. Here's an example of that looking at the BIP trade we just did today. As you can see here on the call side, look at the blue rectangle. The call options at the same $50 strike price that expires in a couple days in September was only trading at, at most around five cents. Even though the option analysis tool said that we had two cents per day in that option, there's just not much actual option premium left in it. That tool is it's just an estimate. Here we're looking at the actual bid and ask. The tip here is that when there's not much option premium left, it's time to either roll that put out in time or close it out and use that capital to enter a brand new stock position. Don't hold onto an option where you only have a few pennies left in option premium. Put that money to work in a new option position. And that's what we did here in BIP and Medtronic. If you'd like a little more information on how we pick the strike price that we sell our put options at, check out the video in the link above in the description below entitled, How to Trade Using Technical Analysis. A second tip or little secret I want to share with you is how to extend a put option position. This is also known as rolling out your option. All this means is that you're giving yourself more time to win on this trade or you want to extend the trade. The last trade I showed you in BIP is a perfect example of that. This option is actually in the money, so you might say that the trade hasn't turned out like I wanted it to. I was hoping by the time this option expired this coming Friday that this position would be worthless, but it's still over $2 in the money. No worries though, because we're option traders, we're going to use one of our secret weapons, and if we don't get the trade exactly right, well we just roll this thing out to the next month or to a later month. That's exactly what we did here in BIP. We rolled it out and got paid to do that. So we actually were paid, even though we weren't exactly right on this trade, and we're still netting an over 15% annualized cash on cash return. That's how you can extend a short put option position. Just buy to close the one that's expiring near term and sell one farther out. I do this all the time. Here's an example of a position that I'm in the process of extending the put option on. 
It's currently in the money, but I want to stick with the position. It's in Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC. Here you see the order I have sitting out there. Where you see the plus in the red box, I'm trying to buy to close the September 18th $26 put. And then just below that, in the same red box, you see where the negative sign is? That's the one I'm selling to open, which is the October 16th same strike price of $26. And in the orange box, you see that I'm trying to get $0.89 cents per share to roll this put option or extend this put option position. The market's not quite there yet. If you look above that in the white box, you see that the bid and ask are around $0.72 cents and $0.75. Cents. There isn't much time premium left in this position because Bank of America is currently trading at $25.38. If we look down at the call and put table at the $26 strike price where I have the black box, the call option, which is currently out of the money, the bid and ask are $0.13 cents and $0.14. Cents. That tells us that most likely in this short put option that we sold, that we're rolling or extending, we only have 13 or 14 cents of time premium per share left in it. It's pretty easy for us to calculate this exact amount because if you take the strike price of $26 minus the current price of $25.38, you see that our short put option that we sold is 62 cents in the money. That leaves the difference of what it's going for, which is around 74 cents if you were to go in the middle of 73 and 75 cents. So our put option has about 12 cents in time value premium left in it right now. That's pretty close to what the call options are going for. That's why if you just want to do a quick glance at the opposing call option, you'll know how much your short put option has left in time premium if it's in the money by looking at what the corresponding call option is selling for. I love rolling my existing positions. They are the easiest money you're ever going to make. As long as nothing has really changed with the stock, if you're able to roll your exact same strike price in the exact same stock for a good return, it's just easy money. Generally, we're able to do this because support and resistance, they haven't really changed and neither have the moving averages. It just doesn't require a whole lot of work as long as you can get a good enough return. I'd say about 85% of the time, I'm rolling my positions on a monthly basis. I generally only have to close out about 15% of my positions and enter new positions. And this is the way that even if we're wrong in the trade and the stock has moved against us, so the put option we sold is now in the money, this is the way to extend the game which will enable you to ultimately win. Next, we're going to talk through how to roll a deep in the money put option. But if you're liking the video, why don't you do me a favor and tap the thumbs up button. It helps support the channel and it means a lot to me. And stay tuned in until the end because I'm going to show you exactly how much we are making by selling put and call options to give you an idea of how much a put option seller can make selling and rolling put options for a living. Let's talk about how to roll a deep in the money put option. One important point that you want to keep in mind when you have a put option you sold that is now deep in the money and you don't want it assigned to you is that you need to make sure there's still some time value premium left in that option. When that short option gets down to five or 10 cents of time premium left in it, it's just not much money. And the likelihood of that option getting assigned to us is very high. A little tip here that I use for my option trading is that as soon as I enter a new short option position, I set an alert on both the put and the corresponding call option. So that as soon as that option only has about 10% or so left in its value, I get an alert so I can then begin to look for an opportunity to roll that option. I don't want to overwhelm you because I have quite a few positions, but here's a screenshot of some of the alerts I have set for my short put options, as well as a few of the short covered call options that I'm in right now. Notice where I have the red box. This is the BIP position I told you about earlier that I rolled today. You see that I have a notice to receive an alert as soon as either the October 16th $50 call or put option is down to only 13 cents in value. This will trigger me to close this position out and either roll it to a later month or if I can't get a good enough premium or return on this position, then I'll close it out and open a brand new position. Some people like to close their short option positions when they have about 25% of value left in them. I typically like to milk it just a little bit more. I do keep an eye on my positions, but I like to buy them back when they have about 10 to 15% left in time premium and then roll them out. Keeping track of your time value is vital if you have a put option that has gone deep in the money and you don't want it assigned to you. So my tip and little secret here is to go ahead and set an alert so that you don't have to worry about watching it closely. Once you set an alert, you'll get sent a signal to take a look at the position and then you can adjust it accordingly. 
It's just a quick and easy way to keep track of how much time value you have left in your option positions. Another important factor you want to consider when rolling deep in the money put options is that you obviously want to make the best return possible. When an option is deep in the money, you actually may get a better return by looking farther out in time than just 30 days. For example, I typically trade a 30-day option. I trade the third Friday of the month's options, and when I'm looking to roll a position, I typically look to roll to the next third Friday of the following month. However, sometimes you actually will get a better return by going farther out in time. Let me give you an example of that in a put option position that is deep in the money that I rolled today. Lazard, ticker symbol LAZ, is a stock that I've been selling put options on and trading in for almost two years now. The stock dropped pretty hard early this year. At that time, I was assigned several of my short put options, but this is one option contract that still has not been assigned to me. I sold the September 18th put option back in early June, so about three and a half months ago. The stock has been climbing the past several months, so it's quite possible that it'll work its way back above this short $37 strike put, so I was trying to roll it out to October to see if it would get past that $37 strike price by the third Friday of October. But look at the time value premium of that option. If we do a quick check here and just look at the call option side, the October 16th $37 call option, it only has an average of $0.35 cents per share in premium. The bid was $0.25 cents and the ask was $0.45, cents. so if we go in the middle, we expect to get $0.35 cents per share for this option. That's only an 11.1% annualized return. Now let's look at the next expiration date, December 18th, to see what kind of return we'd get there. For the same strike price, $37 December call option, the bid is $1.10 and the ask is $1.25. So if we go in the middle, that'd be $1.17 per share. If you analyze that return, it gets a little bit better. It's 12.3% annualized return. Now that's not a huge difference until you calculate it and the return by going out to December is actually 10% better than the return if you did the October trade. So my tip and little secret here that I want to share with you is that when you're rolling deep in the money put options, always double check several time frames. You may get a better return by going farther out in time, especially on those deep in the money put options. At the beginning of this video, I told you I was going to share with you exactly how much cash you can generate selling and rolling put options. If you'd like to see exactly how much cash we receive, mainly by selling put options, but also by selling some covered calls, as well as collecting a few dividends, check out the video series in the link above and description below entitled Option Trading Monthly Cash Flows. In these videos, you will see every trade we did in that month, the amount of cash we've put into our pocket by selling put and call options, as well as by receiving dividends. I think you'll see why I like selling put options so much. It can generate awesome cash flow for us every single month. If you'd like more information on our exact trades, consider the benefits of becoming a patron in the link below. You'd be receiving some awesome information on a weekly basis that you can use to become a better, more profitable option trader, all while supporting this channel. And a quick shout out and a big thank you to all of our current Patreon members, as well as Dean, our newest Patreon member. Thank you for your support. I greatly appreciate it. Check out the videos in the link above and the description below where I share with you my top secrets and tips on how to trade options like a pro. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.